So far we've only been using stock terrain types, but it's now time to learn how to make our custom ones. This will allow us to edit the properties and change the actual textures. So click on terrain. Stock textures are always shown in black. When we create a custom one, the custom terrain will be shown in green. So there's two ways uh, to create a custom texture. They're both in this advanced options section. There's create a new terrain type and clone an existing terrain type. Well, I always clone. I've never used this create. They basically do the same thing, but the create, obviously you're starting from scratch, so you're having to add in a lot of things. One reason not to use this is You've got to set a profile color for your terrain type and unless you know the different values of red green and blue that create the color you're after it's far easier to just clone a terrain that's already got the right color in and work from there so i'm going to clone an existing terrain type so i'm going to select fairway go to clone And you'll see it's fairways in there because I selected it. If I hadn't, you could always select the one you want from the list, but it's it's easier to select it up here and then it will automatically put it in. Now we need to give this a new name. We can't call it fairway because that's a distinct uh, terrain type name. You can't have two terrain type names the same. So I'm going to call this FW2 clone and done now if we scroll down our terrain type list you'll see at the bottom we've now got a green one which is fairway and when I hover over it you'll see the name FW2 has appeared below my arrow so I will highlight that and click on the texture properties so this is our new custom texture it's got all the settings that the original fairway had uh, I don't want to change any of those. The only thing I really want to change is this actual texture at the moment. And the display name is what the, will come up on the course when your ball lands on it. So we want this to still say fairway. You can name it something else so that it's easy to find in this list. Because when you've got a few textures with the same names, it may get confusing. So you may want to change this, this fairway name to fairway 2 or whatever but you need to change it back to a generic name when you finish a course otherwise people are going to land on the lie and it will say some strange name that you've uh, assigned to it and it won't won't give the correct lie so I try and leave them set as I can and remember where they are but it's up to you whether you want to change that name temporarily now if you do change these names, let's say I wanted to call this uh, Fairway Pass. If I click on now on Edit Material, do something in here, and then click OK, what you'll notice is that it's not called. I changed this; it's gone back again. It's another quirk of the APCD that if you go into Edit Material and then come out again, it de it resets all of these back to what they were before so you've either got to set these how you want them click save which will take you out and then go back in or do your edit material first then when you come out set all these which is what I tend to do and then save it so I'm going to edit material and you'll see a list here of available textures now these are all the stock textures that are used in the game which are all mostly 256 by 256 textures there are a few 512 textures that were added for the 2003 release but most of the textures are quite blurry and you'll be wanting to add custom textures uh, maybe the new high definition textures that people have made including myself um, so if you want to add those 
rather than selecting from this list, uh, to select the textures from the list, you would click on them and click this add arrow, and you'll see that's changed to Asphalt 2. But if you want to add your own custom textures that you've created yourself or downloaded, you need to click on this browse button, find the textures on your uh, computer, which mine are going to be in. I think it's 2003 textures. So if I go into, let's say, Anakina Beach, and I'll pick one of my Anakina textures, and you'll see now this has changed to show us the new texture. Now, what I'll do for now, I'll click OK. I'm happy with these settings fairway icon, fairway lie. I'll click Save. And I'll just change this fairway now to the new fairway. So I'm going to group select that. In fact, I'll use the multiple. That way it'll select all the fairways. You'll see this fairway is now highlighted as well. So that would select all the fairways on the course. And I'll scroll down, select my new fairway, and apply it. Now... You'll see it's replaced the texture with the new one. But what you'll notice if I scroll out, it's suddenly changed. And you're thinking, well, that's a bit weird. It's it's gone stripy when I go out. Now this is because when you clone textures, you have to be very careful that there aren't mids and fars included in the texture. Um, we're going to come to mids and far textures in a later tutorial, but for now we're just going to use the standard near textures. So if I go back into my texture and edit material, you'll notice it's set on near for MIP level. If I click on medium, and there's the stripes, and far, there's another one. These are textures for when you're further away they show in the distance so as I zoomed out on this view here that's why the stripes appeared as we got further away at a certain point instead of drawing the near texture it will be replaced by the mid texture and then further out it would replace it again with the far texture so when you clone a texture you have to be wary that there aren't mids and fars. Some textures will have them, some won't. Some will have a mid but no far, some will have both, some will have just the near. So this texture that I clone, the fairway texture, has actually got a far and a, a medium texture as well. So I need to select each one, and this one is fair 03, and click the cross to delete it. And again the medium, that's called fair 02, and I need to remove that as well. So you want these to be black for now, and just a near texture. If the if the game can't find a medium or a far texture, it will use this near texture all the way through, which is fine for now. Uh, so I'll click OK, and click Save. And now, as we zoom out, you'll see it's not changing the texture. And this is a common mistake that beginners make people seem to forget to change out the mids and fars and you'll notice if you use the smart cam and get an aerial view on some courses you'll you'll notice that suddenly a texture will look totally wrong in the distance and this is because people haven't uh, sorted out the mids and fars they've probably left the old ones in or they've not set the scale right for the for the distant textures so that's uh, replacing textures, custom textures. Uh, you'll also need to do this if you're going to be working on an aerial overhead photo. If you're working on a real course, you're going to need to add in that as a custom uh, texture. And you'll also need to be able to scale it, which I will deal with in the next video.